Today, I'm making a Simnel cake. It's a type of light fruit cake, very popular at this time of year, from Mothering Sunday to Easter. It's an ideal tea time cake for the family when they're entertaining. For this recipe, you will need milk, yeast, flour, butter, cinnamon, nutmeg, sugar, currants, candied peel, eggs, brandy, almond paste, and crystallised fruit. I'm going to start by rubbing the butter into the flour. This is a very old recipe. I am told that Simnels are from a long time ago, back when the churches would give their congregation something to eat when they gathered at Mother Church. Although we don't know what the recipe was from back then. There are lots of different versions of Simnel cake all over the country. Mr Strutt, Lord and Lady Braybrook's son-in-law, tells me that Simnel is the Latin word for fine white flour and that he's often eaten them in wafer form. My great-grandmother told me that traditionally hers were boiled and then baked. They were shiny on the outside and difficult to cut open. I'm now going to add all my dry ingredients. The sugar, the candied peel, the currants, a little cinnamon and nutmeg. Just a little. There are a lot of tall tales about Simnels. Annie Chase was telling me one just the other day. I don't remember all the details, but it was that Simnel cake was first invented by a man called Simon and his wife Nellie as they argued over what was the best cake. It was very involved. There was a chair leg and a pudding. It was all very silly. Now I'm going to make a hole in the middle and add my yeast, which has been in warm milk. Along with the eggs. And a little brandy. Wiltshire, they make their simnels in the shape of a star. And I once met a cook who always wrapped hers in pastry. Nowadays, they are mostly just plain cakes with fruit in them. I like this one because it has yeast in it. That must mean it's an old recipe because only old cake recipes have yeast in them. It'll mean that it's more robust, which is ideal, because at this time of year, the family are often travelling down to their townhouse. I'm now going to cover this and let it prove for about two hours. Now that my mix has started to bubble, I'm going to put half in the cake tin and then put a layer of this almond paste, which Mary Ann made for me, in the middle and then put on the rest of the mix. Not all Simnel cakes have a layer of almond paste, but I quite like it. Simnel 
hymnals were popular at this time of year as they were used by those who follow Lent as a weekend off. Mothering Sundays have often been a bit of a feasting time. I remember making myself quite ill on frimity when I was a child. Traditionally though, really, this time of year is for making a pilgrimage to Mother Church. No one does that kind of thing much nowadays. Although the eating traditions have still remained. I understand in America they have a special day called Mother's Day, which is quite different and not popular here. Simnel cake, I suppose, has become an Easter cake. Now, this cake will be baked for between two and three hours, and I might put some brown paper around the outside if it looks like it's getting too dark. This is going to go into the oven, for between two and three hours. I will cover the top and perhaps wrap it in brown paper if it starts to get a little too brown round the outside. Now my cake is baked and has cooled, I've used some of the almond paste to make a ring around it and then brown it a little with a salamander. Now it's time to decorate it. And I'm going to use some of these candied fruits. You could, I suppose, use almond paste to make different shapes or turrets, which would look very delightful, but not very practical for traveling. I have seen some with icing in the middle. And you could write Happy Easter on it. And there you are, Simnel Cake, ideal for a springtime afternoon tea.